My name is Vanessa Awiti and I'm blessed and privileged to be here. I take this chance to welcome all of you to subscribe on our YouTube channel and also like our Facebook page in Calvary Worship Center. We're going to begin with a word of prayer. Father Lord, we thank you. We come before we give you glory and honor for this day, O oh Lord. May you open our inner ears so that we may hear and understand your word, O oh Lord. Guide us in our daily lives. Protect us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's get started. If you're happy in your life, know it, clap your hands. If you're happy in your life, know it, then your life will surely show it. If you're happy in your life, know it, clap your hands. If you're happy in your life, know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy in your life, know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy in your life, know it, then your life will surely show it. If you're happy in your life, know it, clap your hands. If you're happy in your life, know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy in your life, know it, then your life will surely show it. If you're happy in your life, know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy in your Lord, shout it Amen. If you're happy in your Lord, know then your life will surely show it. If you're happy in your Lord, know shout it Amen. If you're happy in your Lord, know two or three. Amen. If you're happy in your Lord, know two or three. Amen. If you're happy in your Lord, know then your life will surely show it. If you're happy. Philippians chapter 2 verse 15 it says you are to live clean and 
You are to, li you are to live clean and innocent lives as children of God in the dark world full of crooked and perverse people. Let your life shine brightly before them. Thank you. Sorry about that. Welcome to today's object lesson. My name is Teacher Dina and I am so happy. Well, apart from this sad news that I'm ranked today, but I'm so happy to be with you today. Well, I was just reading some sad news here in the newspaper. And boys and girls, the news is filled with bad things happening in the world. The world is full of darkness. And do you know how this darkness is caused, boys and girls? It's caused by people like you and me who make a choice to do bad things. People who make a choice to participate in darkness. For example, when you see your friend or maybe your classmate being bullied, boys and girls, you make a choice, you have a choice to add, you have a choice darkness that is participating into darkness by joining in with them and you know being part of the bullying you add you make a choice of adding into the darkness boys and girls but the same way boys and girls as we like the same way we have the choice of adding participating in the darkness the things of the darkness the things of the world we also have a choice boys and girls to be a light and I'm sure for those who are watching this you have received Jesus into your heart and now he lives in your heart and now you are a light you are supposed to be a light instead of joining in with your friends or maybe the bad people who bully you know in school and you know the people around us, instead of joining in with them, you can stand against that. You can, you know, do positive things. And when you do that, boys and girls, we choose, we make a choice. So it's a choice to be a light. And today's memory verse, boys and girls, it tells us, try to shine among people of this world. Try to shine as lights among people of this world boys and girls so us being as christians boys and girls us being christians it's a mandate we are supposed to be the light because you know what boys and girls jesus lives in your heart and now you have hope in you now you have joy in you now you have love in you now you have peace in you boys and girls so it's a choice to be a light, boys and girls. And boys and girls, now being a Christian, we have the light in us the moment we say yes, the moment we received Jesus into our hearts, boys and girls. But do you know what, boys and girls? The Bible tells us when you light a candle, I'm going to light a candle here. When you light a candle, don't try this at home without mommy or daddy's or any guidance supervision there we go, we got my light on just a moment so when you light a candle you don't put it under the table can you do that? no! you put it on the table where everyone can see it and now we have the light in us that is Jesus who is alive in you and boys and girls, we share this light to those who are around us. An example, like what we are learning today in Sunday school, that's the online service. You can tell mommy, daddy, or your friends around what you have learned. You can tell them about the memory of us that you have learned. And that is one way of sharing the light, the good news that is to those who are around. Or your teachers in school. They might be going through something hard. Remember what I said, the light. 
Hope lives in you, love lives in you, peace lives in you, and you carry that inside of you. We carry that as Christians, and it's now up to us to share, not to put the light under the table, but on the table where everyone can see it, boys and girls. And we do that, we make a choice to be a light. Now, I was giving an example like your teachers or the people around you they may be going through something you know hard times they might be worrying and you know and anxious and when you share the good news when you share you know love you might be helping them that is sharing the light they might feel hope just by talking to them about Jesus by just by talking to them about what you have learned today boys and girls so don't keep it to yourself you know what happens when babies grow up they learn the first word and sometimes we also use that word this is mine this is mine this is mine and we think everything that we own it's ours and we don't want to share but boys and girls there is something that you have and that's the light you as a christian the moment you say yes to jesus the moment you receive jesus into your heart it's not up to you it's not just for you to keep it inside we share it and we see that with the example of what jesus did jesus never kept it within himself he never just sat down and never talked to anyone or they never shared jesus went out there and shared and spread the good news and that is what we are supposed to do boys and girls don't keep that inside of you the hope the joy the peace share it with those who are around you boys and girls so today boys and girls we have a choice we have a choice to be a light or we have a choice to add into darkness that is participating into the things of this darkness boys and girls and we as Christians we are supposed to be a light we are supposed not just to be a light but to share this light that is inside of you you allow it to share to come you know through you to those who are around you wow that's a it's a privilege boys and girls we don't deserve it but it's a privilege to be a light the world is a dark place and people have a choice to participate into the things into darkness or to be a light and i'll say it once you have received jesus into your heart now this is you boys and girls you have received jesus into your heart you share with those who are around you this light you share sorry you share this light, mommy and daddy, your sisters, your brothers, your friends, any person that is around you. And that is what we are called to do. So boys and girls, the Bible tells us, I love this song that says, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look fully upon his face and the things of this world will grow strangely dear. So boys and girls, I am asking you for this week and today to focus on Jesus, for he wants to help us. The Holy Spirit wants to help us to share this light that we have inside of us to those around us. You see, my light is shining. I'm not putting it under the table. It's on my table for those who are around me to see it so what is your choice boys and girls that's the main question will you participate in darkness or will you make the choice to be a light what's your answer and boys and girls let us pray that Jesus will help us he now lives inside of us he's alive but he will help us to share this light to those who are around us. And I know sometimes we have made the choice to add, sometimes we have made the choice to, you know, 
contribute to participate in darkness and we need to ask God to forgive us. So boys and girls, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for us. And now he lives inside of me, inside of us. Jesus, you are our light. And you have called us to be the light of this world, Jesus. Lord, I pray that you may help us, God, to share this life, this hope, this joy, this peace those who are around us. Help us, Jesus, not to put the light under the table, the candle under the table, but to put it on the table where everyone can see it. As our class today, as you have reminded us, to try to shine as lights among people of this world. Jesus, we need your help. We need you through this week. Holy Spirit, help us. Help the boys and girls who are watching this, God. That we will not keep this light. We will not think this light is just for us to keep it, God. But for us to share it. For it to, you know, to spread through us, God. We thank you for the hope, God, that is in you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And now, boys and girls, I welcome you to our next session. That's the life story. Enjoy. Hi there, boys and girls. This is Pastor Bethwell, aka Pastor B. And welcome to this segment. As we continue, let me remind us of our topic today. Do not add into the darkness. Instead, be a light that shines forth. Be a light that shines forth. And our main text, or rather, it is written in the Bible from the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 15 and reading from the New Living Translation. It says, You are to live clean, innocent lives as children of God in a dark world full of crooked and perverse people. But, let your lives shine brightly before men. You see, boys and girls, it is easy to see how big and dark the world is and think that there is no possible way that you could do anything to change it. It's just too overwhelming. Your little light that you have to shine could never be too enough to make a difference in all the darkness that you see around you. That overwhelming feeling might make you want to do nothing at all. Be very careful. It is easy to think that way until you read the Bible. Because in the Bible, Jesus told us of a story that completely changes the way we should see things. And that's from the parable of the Good Samaritan. You see, boys and girls, Jesus told of the story of a Jewish man who was walking along the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. Suddenly, that man was attacked by robbers. This man was in a bad situation. He was hurt, his staff was stolen, and he was left laying there for the dead along the roadside. If he was going to survive, he needed help, and he needed it quickly. It just happened that a priest was coming along that very same road some times later. He noticed that the hurt man was lying beside the road. He saw him lying there in pain and needing help. But instead of stopping and helping the man, he just kept on going. He didn't go to see if there was a, something he could do. He didn't call anyone else for help. He didn't do anything at all. Just after that, a Levite happened to be heading down that very same road. Now, he too noticed the man lying there hurt and suffering. But as he came closer, he too passed by on the other side. He didn't stop to check if he was okay. 
he didn't offer the hurt man any help at all. He did nothing to help that man. The priest and the Levite both saw the need that this man was lying their heart, bleeding and needing help, but they didn't meet that need. They just passed by and did nothing about it. But then there was a third man who came traveling down the road. He was a Samaritan, which meant that he was actually an enemy of the Jewish man lying there beat up. But none of those mattered because the moment he saw the need right there in front of him, he was touched and moved. He met that need. And in doing so, he was shining his light in the darkness of that man's life. Stay tuned and watch. God's story, the Good Samaritan. So part of God's story is about a Good Samaritan. And it goes like this. When Jesus lived on earth, he often told stories to teach us things. Stories that teach a lesson are called parables. One day, Jesus told a parable about a good guy from a place called Samaria, a good Samaritan, to a group of Jewish people. It all started when a Jewish expert in the law asked Jesus, what must I do to receive eternal life? Basically, he was asking, what do I have to do to be perfect? Since this guy was an expert in the law, he thought he already knew how to be perfect because he knew all the rules. He just wanted to see what Jesus would say. Of course, Jesus knew what the man was thinking, so he asked him, what is written in the law? The man said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as you love yourself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus answered him by telling this story. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Everybody listening was Jewish, and they could probably all picture the exact road Jesus was talking about. He continued, a priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. You might expect a priest who was supposed to serve God to help, but he didn't stop. Then Jesus said, a Levite came to the place and saw him, but he passed by on the other side too. Levites were assistants to priests, so maybe you'd expect them to help too, but he didn't stop either. Finally, Jesus said, a Samaritan came along. Remember, a Samaritan is a person from Samaria. That's near Israel, where God's family, the Jews, lived. But here's the thing, Jews and Samaritans didn't get along. In fact, nobody hearing this story would ever expect a Samaritan to help because Samaritans and Jews couldn't stand each other. But Jesus said, when the Samaritan saw the man, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out money and gave it to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will pay you back for any extra expense you have. Then Jesus asked, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law didn't even want to say the word Samaritan, but he admitted the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. In other words, go and love everyone, even people we don't like or people who everybody else wants to avoid. See, when we show love, we're obeying Jesus. Obeying God doesn't mean just doing what his rules say. It means loving him more than anything and showing his love to every single person that we meet. And that's the story of the Good Samaritan. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. A man asked Jesus how to get eternal life. Jesus said, what is written in the law? The man said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Then the man asked, who is my neighbor? Jesus told a story. If you miss Jesus' story, here's the quick, quick version. A Jewish man got beat up. A priest walked by. A priest assistant passed by. A man from Samaria actually did help. That was a surprise. Jesus had taught them, we obey God when we show love. And that's part of God's story. Now, boys and girls, this was the conversation that was going through this man's head. His heart, I've got to help him. 
is just a fellow man like me. Freeze. Now hold on a minute there. This Samaritan man was different than the others and I tell you why. It's because he saw the need right there in front of him and he decided to meet it. Was he looking to find all the hurt people in the world to help them? No, of course not. He just saw the need right there in front of him and he met it. And that's exactly how it should be in our lives too. Do you have to find all the hurt people in the world to help them? No, that would be impossible. But you can see a need right there in front of you and meet it just like the Samaritan did or rather do you need to solve problems of the whole world no or rather do you need to solve problems of world hunger no you just need to see the need right there in front of you that there is a kid without anything to eat at lunchtime and meet that need by sharing your own lunch with them. When you do that, you are shining your light in that dark situation. Oh, lastly, do you need to find all the hopeless people in the world? No, of course. You just need to see the need right there in front of you that your own mother is struggling with things and doesn't know how to turn and meet that need by sharing with her about the love and the hope she can have in Jesus Christ. You don't have to meet all the needs in the world and your light doesn't have to shine bright enough for the whole world to see. But what you do need is to shine your little light into the situation that you see right there in front of you. That's what the Samaritan did. He saw the need right there in front of him and he met it. He was shining his light in a dark situation. Don't add to the darkness. Choose to be a light. And to do that, you need to see the need right there in front of you. You are to live a clean life, innocent life, as children of God in a world full of darkness. Let your lives shine brightly before the whole world. Until next time, may God be with you. This is Teacher Francis and Amani. Amani. Amani, say hi to everyone. Hi, everyone. Hello. And today, I'm excited to tell the story of Michaela March, the Bright Hero. I hope you will enjoy the story. God bless. Hello, everyone. Today's life lesson is titled. Michaela Match, the bright hero. In your mind, I want you to go back to the day when Hurricane Sunday hit. You probably remember where you were. There was a lot of rain, wind, trees were falling. It was crazy. Some of you might have been scared. It went on for about two days and then it stopped. There was Michaela the Match and her brother Marquise, and they lived in a corner store in Corny Island. They were hiding in their matchbox from the storm. When they realized it had stopped, they poked their little heads out and Michaela said, Is it over yet? But then they had something else. The storm was over, but they had all this yelling, screaming, people cursing, things breaking, what was going on? They snuck out of their corner store and when they looked around the corner, they saw it. There were these guys kicking down stores, breaking into things, 
taking anything they could. Michaela couldn't believe it. As she got closer to the window, she saw a lady right there at the corner with a flashlight. She had two little children and was trying to buy the last flashlight. But right there, one of the guys snatched it. Give me that. Why would somebody do something like that? They're so mean, Makela said to her brother Marquise. So many terrible things have happened. Why would they make it worse? We have to do something. But Marquise looked Marquis. But look at Marquis's face. He was like, Psst, what can we do? Some of you think just like that. You look at the violence in your neighborhood and think, what can we do? There's shooting, gang violence, so many terrible things happening. You see it on the news. And wherever you look, there is darkness. I know. I live here too. But you have a choice. You can either be part of it and add to the darkness and make it even worse, get into fights, talk like everyone else, or here's your other choice. You could choose to be a light to the people around you by helping them, being a friend to them, sharing Jesus with them. That's what you can do. Don't add to the darkness. Choose to be a light. But Marquise, he didn't think there was anything he could do. Just as they were talking, there was a huge smash. Somebody broke the window with a baseball bat. Run! Michaela yelled. They're coming! But her brother wasn't running. Quick! We gotta go! Why are you stopping? She looked back. I have an idea. What's your idea? We've gotta get out of here. No! If you can't beat them, join them. So, to add to the darkness, Marquis jumped right in front of the guys. When they saw the little match, do you know what they did? They burned down the entire store. Boom! Oh. Michaela screamed. She ran away across the street as fast as she could. Why would Marquis do that? Why would he add to the darkness? She had her head down crying, but then she had a sad little voice. No, May, we don't have any light. What are we going to do tonight? It's going to be so dark and scary in our house. Michaela looked up and recognized the lady and her two kids from the store. The same lady who had her light stolen. Right then, Michaela realized that these people needed a light. Now look at me, all of you will find people who need light. It might be the kid sitting next to you in school, or your mom on the couch feeling depressed. I'm not talking about a flashlight, I'm talking about Jesus inside of you. The hope that they need, the love you have inside of you. They need it. People need your light. You need to choose to share it. Share the light of Jesus with others. That's what you need to do. And that's what Michaela needed to do. She made her choice. She wasn't going to be like her brother. She jumped, she jumped right in front of the lady. The lady saw the match and picked it up. Is this a dry match? There was a tear coming down her face. That's how happy she was. She couldn't believe it. She took her kids and went back home. Tonight, we're going to have light. 
she took the match and lit it and used it to light the candle. That night, they weren't sitting in the darkness because Michaela made a choice to be a light. There's people that you need to light. I want you to think of one person you can be a light to. Make the choice not to add to their darkness. Ignore it or do nothing about it. But to be a light to them. You can pray for them, share Jesus with them and help them. Who wants to do that? And now let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming into my heart and being my light. Today, I want to be a light because there are many people who don't have that light. They don't know you like I do. I want to decide to be a light to my family, my class, and my neighborhood. Help me make little changes in the dark world. Thank you, Jesus, for helping me. In your name, I pray. Amen and amen. We have come to the end of our session, boys and girls. Ah, oh, and we have to end it there. Unfortunately, I hope you have enjoyed our service and I also hope that you have learned something. You have a choice to participate in darkness or to be a light. And you as a Christian, you are supposed to be a light. And if you haven't received Jesus into your heart, oh my, the good news, he's always wide arms open and he welcomes you just as you are. So if you want to receive Jesus into your heart, pray this prayer after me. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, thank you for dying for me. I confess that I am a sinner and I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me. I ask you to come into my heart and make it your own. Be the Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And now he lives inside of you. Now the light who is alive and roaring like a lion lives inside of you. And boys and girls, you have a choice to be the light. Remember, we are the light of the world. We are the city on the hill. So what's your choice? To be the light or to participate in darkness. And not just be the light, to share that light to those around you. Allow that light to shine through you to those who are around you. Be blessed boys and girls and stay safe. Bye.